Hey folks, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Can't believe how short the days are. Sun's already going down. I gotta do a little straightening up in the shop before we get on to what we're actually gonna do for this video. Check it out. We've got a handful of lures that we're gonna take out of here and we're gonna silver plate all of those, but I'm gonna go on to paint the top water lure I made a couple of videos ago because I kind of left it kind of up in the air since the mold I made turned into such a wreck. But I molded a bunch, I got them sanded down and nice and neat, and hopefully we'll end up with some silver bullets out of these things. All right, now I can see, and I can see the place is a wreck. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of neatening up and cleaning up before I actually get to the point where I can actually silver plate these lures. Silver plating is actually a process where you apply two different chemicals at the same time on the surface of something. There's a saturated silver solution, and then there's a reactant. And when they come together, the silver just falls out of solution and layers uh, the surface of whatever you're putting it on with a really thin layer of pure silver. And the beauty is that it's actually much more reflective than even chrome. It's a little bit of a complicated process, but once you get it down, as long as you got your gear set up pretty nicely, it goes pretty quickly. The key is having lures that already have a really super glossy finish. Now, it doesn't have to be black on the background. In fact, I kind of prefer a white background. I kind of changed my mind like three times with these things, so we're gonna live with what we got. So really getting a really shiny chrome-like finish is just step one to getting the paint job I want on these walk the dog topwater lures. All right, I've got my paint booth set up. I need to add a little bit of water to these canisters and make sure the gun is calibrated so it's spraying nice and evenly, and then we're ready to rock. Right now, I'm using just a bit of water in both of these canisters to do this calibration. And I'm hoping my compressor keeps running. I've had to fix it three times today. I had a tube blowout I replaced it with a tube that couldn't hold the pressure and then that blew out and I had to go to the store get a piece of copper. Anyway, it took me hours, but sounds like it's working. It looks pretty even, a little more coming out of the right one. So I'll tweak that. That looks about right. Now I usually have a bigger batch when I do this kind of thing. I try to have 15 or 20, this time I only have 10, and I just had a lot of trouble getting a good glassy clear coat on these things, as you can see by the uh, these white marks where I had to sand down bad spots. So the first step is to clean these things off with some alcohol. Okay, so these are the two chemicals. You can see the bottles are really well marked because it's super important never to cross contaminate. Even a tiny bit will ruin it. You have to make sure you don't cross up the cap or fill the wrong bottle with the wrong stuff. This is uh, surface preparation stuff. This, uh, this chemical here prepares the surface of the lure so that when the fluid hits, it spreads really evenly and it doesn't bead. So we're gonna do this little ugly duckling. I like to put this stuff on by dunking it. Uh, most most kits tell you to spray it on and then I spritz it off with the um, distilled water all right that looks like it's got it let's see how this turns out even uh, with the flaws that are on it. Hopefully you can see how shiny that is and how it reflects the whole, the whole shop. Now it's time to do the rest of them. This one has a few flaws in it. You can usually get around some of the flaws by sort of painting some of the details over them. All right, let's go ahead and do one of the uh, top water ones. 
Hopefully, it comes out at least as good. looking pretty nice there are some flaws you can see the one on top and that was just a bad spot I had to fill and then over here you see that black spot that's where I stuck my thumb on it all right I'm gonna just keep going I think I'm gonna wash those other ones in some soapy water first because apparently I've touched them just a little too much <laughs> This just never gets old. I love the look of uh, just bright, bright silver. I'm completely addicted to it. All right, so next step is to start painting these guys. So what I wanna do is paint my three favorite top water lure color patterns for salt water. And the first one is gonna be what I call a white chrome or a ghost chrome. It's real simple and doesn't have many details or many extra colors. So I'm trying to pick the lure with the fewest sort of blemishes in the chrome. This one's pretty good. It's got a couple little spots, but I think we can work around it. So on this ghost chrome, I just take pearlized white and I spray it everywhere but on the belly. And unfortunately, I had the camera off while I was doing it. But it needs a little bit more. The idea is to have that ghostly white color with the chrome shining through uh, from underneath. And then I like to put a little bit of a black hood on it. And I want to put a little strike eye on it too. All right, so this is not the most exciting paint job but I like to put a little bit of color at the bottom. I'll tint the belly with some copper, uh, transparent copper that is. And that's really <laughs> hard to see on camera, but it's got a deep copper tone. And then just a little bit of pearl red, just to hammer home the color on the front. And I'm trying to cover up this last little blemish. Now it just needs a nice eye. I think I'm going to put a red eye on this. All right, and there it is. It'll look much better after the clear coat. All right, so the next one is a really simple paint job too. It's one I call a blue top. And it's pretty much top with blue. And I start off with... Uh, ghost tint blue which is essentially a transparent blue and I'm going to hit it from the top down about halfway across where the eye is then I'll come in with the darker blue on top and underneath I hope to make it really orangey and it's the combination of blue and orange that I think works really well because blue crabs out there are blue and orange and that, that theory might be nonsense but it works And instead of black, I'll come in with a darker blue right on top just to give it a little bit of a difference in look. Now I need to do something on the belly. 
and I'm going to go with a dark transparent yellow and try to turn it really deep gold. And this is a ghost tint orange. And that gives you a really nice gold. I know this is really hard for the camera to pick up, but it does turn gold. And now I'm going to do something a little bit radical because I've got so many blemishes around the eyes and everything. I want to paint almost the full head orange and have the orange sort of drift down a little bit too. And this is just Createx transparent orange. I've got one more little blemish right there but that looks like a perfect spot for a, a strike eye. I'm going to put a little one right there and match it on the other side. And we're going to throw caution to the wind here and do this one by hand. That looks pretty good. There we go. Cool. Now a little bit of red on the chin. Nice. Alright, I went with gold eyes on this one. And this thing is really going to pop once uh, it gets clear coated. Alright, so the last one I'm going to do is uh, kind of a mullet pattern. I'm going to use pretty much the same colors except for I'm going to put some green on this one. And that's what I start out with, with transparent green. This is called uh, ghost tint green. And all these ghost tint colors are from Badger Paints. And the idea here is to go from about the top of the eye down to the middle of the eye with a, a stripe of green. Alright, and now from about the middle of the eye down to close to the belly, I'm going to go with gold. Just a little bit, just to turn it a little bit gold. The next thing is to put some scale pattern on it. And I like to do that with transparent black, but I'm going to do it as subtly as I can do it. And I'm going to use this uh, ghost tint oil discharge. Just get it a hint of sort of scales going down the side. All right, that's pretty subtle. Now I'm going to go black on top. All right, I like that. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's put a little detail on there. There's a little fin stencil. And now I'm going to put a little bit of a yellow highlight just underneath this little fin. Well, I painted one extra one with a color I've never painted before. So we'll see how that looks at the end. And I painted three of my fat bellies, which this is really an absolutely lethal lure out there. And this is my favorite color scheme. The chrome with a green top. So I'm going to go ahead and get these things clear coated and get them in the uh, UV chamber. And when they come out, I'll go ahead and take some nice photographs and we'll have a little bit of a slideshow. If we got the weather and the time, I'll get some water shots. All right, so that's one, six more to go. I'll get back to you when the UV resin is set. All right, so the weather went from mediocre to terrible. I waited all afternoon to see if it would clear up and maybe we could get down to the lake 
and get some nice, pretty, sunny, uh, next to the water photographs of the lures. But no luck. So, let me get them out of the UV chamber and I'll show you what they look like right now. But then I'm going to take some photographs and try to get some nice images so we can do a slideshow at the end. All right, here they are. Here's the blue one. Looking pretty nice. Here's the ghost chrome. And here's the mullet pattern. Really love this thing. And here's the weird violet looking thing. Not quite sure what to make of this, but it looks pretty cool anyway. Can't wait to try it in the water. All right, I'm going to try to get some quality photographs of these along with some of the uh, fat bellies that I also did. And I'll go ahead and put a little slideshow here at the end. But before I do that, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's been watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these kind of videos. And if you haven't subscribed, obviously subscribe. Oh, and for those of you who were watching that last video and got to experience my absolute failure twice in making a mold for this topwater lure, uh, I hope to actually recuperate a little bit of reputation here because I did pour that second half again. So let's hope for the best uh, right here on camera. Let's see what happens. Come on, baby. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Perfect. Finally. All right. Now I have a good mold that I can actually cast this thing without having to sand for half of my lifetime. All right. Now for the slideshow.